deforestation, and today I'm here to say that we are going to do more. For 10 years we've been combating deforestation in Brazil, and we've been doing the same in palm oil trade in Asia. Recently we committed to zero deforestation. Uh, Africa is expected to cut back drastically on carbon emissions. Africa will be using climate smart agriculture. Um, Africa is trying to uh, plant green cor cor corridors uh, of, uh, to stop uh, the certification and also uh, create carbon sinks so we don't emit carbon dioxide ignorantly and indiscriminately. Thank you, uh, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Secondly, um, in, uh, on January, in, in January in Davos, I stood next to the Secretary General and announced that uh, we had reached about $10 billion in green bonds and uh, issued a challenge to double that amount uh, by the summer. I'm very happy to state that we are now over $25 billion uh, in green bonds. And uh, it seems clear that the interest is rising. Barclays just a few days ago announced that they were going to issue a $1 billion pound green bond. Interest in investing in, in, in clean, uh, uh, in, in sustainable uh, energy, in, in uh, uh, other ways of combating climate change is encouraging. Unfortunately, it's still not enough. We have a long way to go. Uh, we need to uh, achieve more by COP20, and then we really do need to reach the agreement. But uh, I'm very optimistic, Secretary General, with your leadership, that we'll get there. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite the uh, Mr. Eduardo Baez, Mayor of Rio de Janeiro, to talk about the cities. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary General. First, congratulations on the summit. And I'm pleased and honored to be here today uh, to speak on behalf of my fellow mayors and urban citizens. Uh, as we know, cities, cities have a special place in this meeting because uh, so much of our global climate problem can be solved through urban climate solutions. From Rio to Seoul, mayors are already making great progress in reducing green greenhouse gas emissions and climate risks, as we know. Today, we take a step further. Uh, the prominent uh, city networks organizations are announcing uh, later today a global compact of mayors, as said by the Secretary General, to build on individual efforts and harness the collective power of the world cities. As mayors, we are committing to set ambitious climate targets, make those voluntary commitments public, and hold ourselves accountable with rigorous and transparent reporting. 
Many of us already have commitments in place. In fact, Mr. Secretary General, when you add together the commitments by mayors, and I'm talking here uh, about more, almost 500 million people across more than 200 uh, cities, uh, the cities will cut greenhouse gas emissions by 430 megatons annually by 2020, uh, which means a cumulative uh, 13 gigatons of uh, CO2 by 2050. And thanks to new groundbreaking research uh, announced today in a report from the Secretary General's special voice on cities, for the first time we can say with confidence exactly how much help cities can offer to the fight uh, on global climate change. Mayors can help close the global emissions gap by 8 gigatons annually in the year 2050, or a massive 147 gigatons in total between now and then. Uh, but to accelerate progress to the level we mayors want to deliver, other partners are needed. Uh, the city's Climate Finance Leadership Alliance is one such coalition of public and private sector partners that aim to stimulate investments in climate smart infrastructure to the tune of trillions of dollars per year. And to further accelerate these investments, Mr. Secretary uh, General, in urban solutions, we are also announcing a new city credit workplace partnership which brings together the resources of the C40C's Climate Leadership Group, uh, the World Bank, and Bloomberg Philanthropies to help 300 cities strengthen their credit worthiness and attract investors. Today's announcements, Mr. Secretary Jim, General, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, are a powerful symbol of unity and progress among the world cities. They are also, uh, we hope, a demonstration of our commitment to helping nation states, and we know that Mr. Secretary General is pushing that very hard uh, to meet the awesome challenge that the Secretary General and his special voice for cities and climate change, former Mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg, has laid out as two partners for Paris and beyond. Thank you very much. Now, next I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Helger Lund, the CEO of the Staten Oil Group, to speak on the oil and gas industry initiative. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. This summit is happening because fighting climate change, change is urgent. We all know, however, that fossil fuels will provide a substantial part of the energy needed to secure growth and prosperity of the decades uh, to come. But we also know that we can achieve this while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. This will require new policies, new innovation, and not the least, more action through effective partnerships between government, business, and civic society. The most forceful action would be a global framework that puts an effective price on carbon. This is why Statoil is here today, to pledge our support for action. A price on carbon gives industry incentives to find new technologies to bring down emissions and allows for the competitive and level playing field. Government sets the rules, the industry competes for the best solutions. Producing energy with as low emissions as possible must be a top priority for the oil and gas business too. And real progress is being made at this summit. The, the launch of the climate and clean air coalitions to work on short-lived climate pollutants, such as methane, is one example. Today, Statoil announces that we are pleased to be among the six companies that have joined the Climate and Clean Air Coalition's Oil and Gas Partnership, the other founding company partners being VG, ENI, Southwestern Energy, PTT, and Pemex. The initiative also includes governments from the US, UK, France, Mexico, Nicaragua, and Norway along with the Environmental Defense Fund and UNDP. We strongly believe this coalition can make a difference by systematically monitoring, reducing, and publicly report on methane emissions. And that will pave the way for substantial improvements and progress. So thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, now I'd like to invite Mr. Jim 
invite uh, Mr. Max Anderson, CEO of AP4, to speak on the role of pension funds in climate finance. I think we have absolutely no time to waste in the battle against climate change. Now all forces must be mobilized, including financial markets. Because climate change is not only a risk for society, it is in all respects a risk to investors. One concrete solution to reduce climate risk is to reallocate capital from polluting companies toward more carbon efficient companies. By doing so, we put carbon on the agenda for every company and for every pension fund. AP4 has already started to act to decarbonize its portfolio. By doing so, we are lowering the risk both for uh, the pensioners, our clients, and for the entire in short, we are combining transparency and sustainability at no extra cost. Now is the time to scale up this effort. I am therefore very proud and honored to announce a new coalition, the Portfolio Decarbonization Coalition. It's founded by four entities, AP4, Amundi, CDP, Unit 5, and supported by the Chinese CICC. This coalition will have two main goals from now up until COP21 in Paris a year from now. First disclosure. The coalition will find institutional investors that are prepared to disclose the carbon footprint for at least 500 billion US of assets. Second action. We commit to gather institutional investors who will decarbonize at least 100 billion US of assets. This is just a starting point for even more. We need to cut emissions and work towards carbon neutrality. United Nations has made a firm commitment that we will make all United Nations systems carbon neutrality by 2020. This is what we have decided just a couple of weeks ago uh, through all principles meeting. Uh, we need to invest more money in tomorrow's green economy. We need to put a price on carbon and pollution, and we need to strengthen resilience on the changes to come. That means getting all hands on deck. And again, I thank you very much for your strong commitment. Uh